Are you ready for part two? I am. I love space. And now we're getting into our solar system, starting with our sun. We're gonna go from the sun to Mars in this part, part two. Hi students, I'm so excited because we are going to the solar system, learning about the solar system in which Earth resides. And of course that starts with our star, the sun. It's getting hot in here. The sun is named for Sol, which is the Greek sun god, Helios. It's about four and a half billion years old, so it's a middle-aged star, which is a good thing because middle-aged, medium-sized stars last a long time. If our star was too big, then it would have a shorter life. And it is made of hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen and helium, remember that because it's important as we get to the outer planets. This is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that, but our star is a main sequence star. So that falls right in the middle of that diagram. The closest planet to the sun is Mercury. It is the smallest planet, so thus it has a very weak amount of gravity. It has no atmosphere, but it has lots of iron and a large solid core. This guy is pretty dormant. You, don't, you aren't going to see a lot of volcanic activity, none, <laughs> no weather because there's no atmosphere, so it's pretty much a dead planet. We know this because we've sent robots there. One of the robots we've sent is Messenger. It was launched in 2004, and it completed its mission in 2015. And it definitely went to understand Mercury, the smallest, densest, and least explored of the terrestrial planets. The next planet is Venus. Venus has an extreme environment, a heavy carbon dioxide atmosphere, and it is the hottest planet in our solar system. What's kind of cool about Venus is it has a retrograde rotation. So sometime in its formation, something might have hit it and knocked it out of whack. And so instead of the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, it actually rises in the west and sets in the east. And of course, its heavy carbon dioxide atmosphere traps that heat on its surface, creating a greenhouse effect, which makes it the hottest planet in our solar system. Earth. Earth is the third planet from the sun. It finally is the first planet that has a natural satellite, the moon. Now, let me tell you, this is my pet peeve. Our natural satellite, the Earth's natural satellite, is named moon. So in this presentation, I'm not going to refer to Jupiter's moons. That doesn't make sense. I wouldn't go to your house and call your dog Chica just because my dog is named Chica. It doesn't work like that. So our natural satellite is named the moon and Jupiter's natural satellites have their own names that we should refer to them by. The earth is pretty cool because it has the abilities to sustain life. It's mid-size, it is volcanically active, it is a very rocky planet and it has liquid water. Liquid water, wherever we find it on earth, we find life as well. We have a few artificial satellites around our planet as well. But let's talk about our natural satellite, the moon. It is, in simi it is similar in size to Mercury, and it actually looks like Mercury in some pictures. It is the fifth largest satellite in our solar system. That's not half bad. The next planet is Mars. So it's the fourth planet from our sun. It's about a third of the size of Earth. It does have two natural satellites, and they have names, Phobos and Deimos. It's famous for its red color caused by iron oxide dust covering the surface. And it only holds a little bit of an atmosphere because it's much smaller than our planet Earth. It can't, it's all about how much gravity it has to hold gases to its surface. So if you're the Earth, you have a lot of gravity to hold those gases to the surface. But Mars doesn't have that, so it only holds a little atmosphere. Now, we've sent many robots to the Martian surface, and we plan on sending humans soon, which will be exciting. The first one was Sojourner in 1997, and it was the size of a microwave. If you ever watch The Martian, he actually finds Sojourner and wakes her up to communicate with Mission Control. Then Spirit and Opportunity in 2004, they were 
uh, two robots that went that were actually named by elementary students. And then we have Curiosity that was the size of a Volkswagen bug, and it landed in 2012. But how easy is it to get to Mars? I think sometimes we don't think about all the obstacles that might be in our way. Okay, so in the center, the little white star there is our star, the sun. The blue is Earth, the white is our spacecraft, and the red is Mars. I wish we could just go straight across, that would make it really easy, but you have to remember that everything in our solar system is moving. The solar system, the whole thing is moving. The Earth is rotating on its axis, and we are revolving around the Sun, as well as Mars. So it kind of makes it a little more complicated and a little bit more mathematical. So let's see. Let's go. <laughs> On eight, we're actually in Martian orbit, but where's Mars? It's pretty far behind us, so we're a little bit embarrassed. So we just head back because you just can't stop and wait. You have to be moving too. <laughs> Month 17, and now we're dead. Oh, because we made it back to Earth's orbit but the Earth is on the other side of our star, the Sun. Let's try this again. <laughs> so let's wait for the right moment that we can leave that will actually reach Mars in its orbit. Here we go. We did it. We made it to Mars to Mars the planet, not just its orbit. It took us eight and a half months to do that, and now we are heroes. Everyone on planet Earth is so excited for us, so we just go ahead and head home. Oh no. Now we're dead heroes. Since we didn't time it correctly once we got to Mars and when we left, uh, it took us 17 months to get back in Earth's orbit, but Earth is on the other side of the sun. We're dead heroes at this point. Okay, we've got to get it this time. Okay, so how long would a trip to Mars really last? Let's see. And now at 32 months, we are safely home at last. So there's lots of things that we have to plan for as we look to exploring the Martian surface with humans. As we speak, or as you watch this video, NASA is planning and building the rocket and capsule that will take humans back to the moon and then to Mars. NASA named this manned space mission Artemis. And yes, in Greek mythology, Artemis is Apollo's twin sister. What is very exciting is that NASA is partnering with private industry to accomplish our nation's goals. This particular private industry, SpaceX, owned by Elon Musk, sent this Tesla Roadster to Martian orbit in 2018. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new about Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And next time, we will explore the four outer planets and beyond. I hope to see you then. Bye.